it's, gonna... it's been weird. Yeah. For sure. But, uh, yeah. you know, we're all just trying to do what we can. We, we are. And I see you have a, a new addition um, that's making its debut appearance, at least on, in my world, this little thing going on. Oh, yeah. I figured if any time ever to try growing some facial hair, I figured quarantine is the time. Quarantine is the time to do it. So we're going to see how it goes. So far, it, 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 I don't know about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, Hannah wants to say hi. Hi, Hi. Hannah. (laughs) Oh, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. You go back out with Daddy now, okay? Daddy's feeding White Cat. Daddy's feeding. Well, why don't you go back out and help Daddy feed White Cat? Okay, well, you do something there with him. All right. (laughs) Bye. 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 (laughs) Um, Okay, and Tina's unmuted too. I'm just going to post in the group really quick. Oh, and what I'm going to do is make you the um make you a host and then you can share everything so you're the host now and then you can share your screen and then you should be able to share your computer audio as well yeah theoretically yes theoretically i think so i haven't actually been able to try it yet but yeah yeah, i've got everything set and ready so and you know what? This is just all an exercise in patience for I think everybody involved. Um, <laughs> so it's and especially like because Zoom got super hacked last week, so I like I don't Zoom you know. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. Um, like, did you see uh, by any chance? Did you see the Stephen Colbert show where he was interviewing uh, Daniel Radcliffe the other day? No, I, it came up in my YouTube feed, but I didn't see it yet. It's worth a watch because the first two and a half minutes is them like trying to figure out what's going oh, yeah, wrong where he, they yeah. can't hear Daniel. And then he gets on the phone. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so they're on funny. their screens, on the phone, recording the audio that had to be put back over the video later. That's really cool. on each side. Oh man, it's crazy. Wild, but, wild technology. But you know, I'm glad everyone's trying to figure it out. I, I don't think the world's ever going to be quite the same again. It's true. Let me just put this post in. Um, there's your lovely picture, Michael Raddy, and I'm just sending this. Okay. Do you have a good audience on Friday? <laughs> We had about eight people live at one point, but then um, then we I reposted it, and I think it said something like eighty people have seen it so far. Oh, that's great. So yeah, let me just post this, um, and then we'll be good to go. So, do you want to test out with your audio or anything first? Yeah, let's do that here. I'll do a screen share. Oh, I can choose what I'm screen sharing. Fascinating. Um, I don't know how that's... Hmm. Okay, and yeah, share computer sound. Let's see if this works specifically. All right. Um, While well, he's working, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah? Yeah, I see it. All right, cool. Here, I'm gonna click on this track. You can tell me about volume. Mary Upward, right now? Nice. I hear you that. that? Yeah. Watching her. Well, this she, is cool. Isn't that awesome? I love that. Look at modern technology. Yeah. All right. So then to stop the screen share. Oh, I see. Oh, a little bar pops up. How fun. Isn't that cool? Wow. <laughs> My back? Your back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it too. I love it too. All right. So, um, hey, good. You coughed into your elbow. Good. Well done. 
Yeah, well, silly me. I went for a run this morning, which is like, great, yay, exercise. But um, I forgot that with everything blooming right now, that um, my allergies were just going to make me cough the rest of the day. It's like, cool. Good for yeah. me. And then everybody thinks that you're sick. And so. Right. Because yeah. yeah. I don't know what a dry cough is. Anyway. Okay. Fair enough. Um, all right. So. I, we will just go ahead and I'll start chatting with you and then people will come in and they will leave and they will come and they will go and we're just going to keep it casual and then we record it and then we put it up and Sounds there fun. it is. Awesome. There it is. Um, and I'm just checking. Sometimes I'm going to be looking down because I'm checking messages and stuff too. So no worries. how are you? Thank you for um, being part of this tutor by the quarantine Well, thing. thank you for having me. It's so nice to see you again. Nice to Good see you again, too. Michael. It's been, uh, it's been kind of like sad for me not knowing if TutorCon, if I'm going to be able to go this year. And I was like, oh man, I met so many great people last year. But now everything's up in the air. So it's lovely to see your faces. And here we are. <laughs> we'll figure it out as we all go, right? <laughs> right? It's, it's just an exercise in letting it go and letting yeah. it be and seeing what happens. Oh, um, I... I admit people now. I see. I see. Oh, oh, and you know what? I don't know why it had me having to admit people. That was so weird because the other meeting, it didn't have that. Well, so, that's all right. I, I'll that's just that's try to keep good. tabs when I'm not screen sharing. Okay. Yeah. And if people... Maybe in the new security, you have to let them in. I know. They're like Maybe. To start with, it said that you have to... Um, have a password, but then I was able to go in and edit that out. So at first this meeting had a password, but then it didn't. And so I, and now letting people in. Yeah, I think they're, they're doing a lot with weird security things. So, um, well, I just tried to let Meg in and then she disappeared. She was know. here for half a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she'll minute. come back. Hopefully she will. Um, all right. So for people who, have not heard of you before or seen you before, mm -hmm. um, which it's hard to imagine that anybody hasn't been exposed to the awesomeness that is you, but oh, for stop. <laughs> um, tell me about the King's legacy and who you are and sure. why you're here tutorifying things. Uh, absolutely. All right. So I'm my name is Michael Ratty. I'm a writer, uh, musical theater writer and performer, also a musical director and a vocal coach. I live in New York City. I teach kids for my survival job on Long Island. And uh, in my career life, I write musical theater mostly, and I mostly perform in the summers these days. Um, but the, the King's Legacy is one of my original musicals. It's the third musical I had started, and it's the only one that's actually gotten a production. So, woohoo, go Kings Legacy. <laughs> but I started it way back in 2012 because I adore Anne Boleyn, mm -hmm. and I felt that her story has been, um, it's been told many ways, but there was a way that I wanted to tell it, and mm -hmm. I thought it deserved the musical theater treatment because the only musical that existed at all about Tudor England is called Rex. And it was written in the 70s. It did not do very well. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. mostly about Henry. And so I started the process of writing King's Legacy. And it's been a very long journey. It's had a lot of different iterations. But it found a structural home after about four years. <laughs> And so I've been working with that version and honing things in and trying new things out through readings and small workshops, different casts, Broadway stars, some of them sometimes just casual in my apartment. And then mm -hmm. finally this past summer at the Bristol Valley Theater in Naples, New York, uh, we had our premiere production, which went swimmingly. It went so well, so much better than I could have hoped for. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. And then you also came to TutorCon too, so. And then I came to TutorCon. <laughs> so a lot of people that follow you have heard my voice or seen my face already and heard some of the music, which we got to do live in concert, which was awesome. Yeah. That was such a great time. That was so awesome. Um, so I...
you tell this story about how you first kind of got uh, tuned into the tutors because you it was through Philippa Gregory and a girlfriend's book or something, like, right? <laughs> Well, I first learned about the tutors from my, uh, my sister had gone abroad in yeah, college. Okay. And when she came back, one of her gifts for me, she was studying in New York, one of her gifts for me was a Horrible Histories, The Terrible mm -hmm. Tutors. So I was reading that through and I was like, huh, uh, th these people are very interesting. And I was particularly drawn to Henry, Anne, and Elizabeth. And then mm -hmm. I didn't really pursue learning more about them. But whenever I saw stuff that had to do with the tutors, whether it was a book or a film or a TV show, I would always put it on because I was so interested. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, yeah, uh, I thought to myself, this would make a great musical story, but never really did anything about it. And then I started writing musical theater in college, which I kind of fell into in a weird way. And um, then, yeah, it was... After my senior year, I was uh, reading The Other Boleyn Girl, my girlfriend's copy at the time, and <laughs> I finished it and I was kind of mad because I didn't really like the portrayal of Anne Boleyn. And I was like, ah, but it's such a good story. Someone needs to write this musical. And she was like, well, why don't you do it? Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I kind of sat on it for like another year, but then I finally started it. And, awesome. Uh, that's well, how we got here. Would you play us some music now? Um, Absolutely. So Oops. I don't know. I was thinking about the songs that I really like, um, but <laughs> I, I might make a special request of you later. Um, and I love the one where the two guys are just, well, the King's Legacy is what it's called, right? And like it yes. has so many cute little puns and stuff like that. And it's all jaunty and, and I love that one. But um, Maybe you it's an can... act two comedy song because who doesn't like an act two comedy song? Sure, yeah. I was you thinking, I th I was thinking maybe I'd focus a little more on the women's songs to begin with because uh, one of the things that I have found to be so fun about writing this show is there are so many women in the story who often mm -hmm. get short shrift who I wanted to bring in and uplift, and so the cast is five women and a young girl and then three men. So it was really fun for me to write for women's voices for mm -hmm. this whole thing. So, um, uh, but we, I mean, we can start with a comedy song if that sounds more fun. I don't want to, no, no, no. I don't want to mess up your your flow. So oh, no, I just have like a list going over here. I was like, I don't know, okay. maybe these songs. Um, you know what, let's start with The King's Legacy because why not? Okay. All right. How do we do the screen share thing again? This button. There was the share button down uh -huh. below. Oh, I also pulled up the uh, the teaser trailer video that I had created. Oh, yeah. Do you want to play that. that too? Yeah, play us that. Yeah. All right, let's see. Because this is with footage from the summer's production. OK. I pushed it out of control. I pushed it out of control. I did what I, I did, and I swear I don't regret. Son supposedly would help. But Mary's full of fear and rage. Elizabeth has come of age. Little Edward's sick and won't engage. And now the country's fate is center stage. Oh, darling, Amazing voices. 
It was a great cast. I got very, very lucky. Yeah. Um, and I, I love the, it was cool to see the costumes. Tell, can you tell me anything about, um, I mean, obviously there are people who do costumes. What kind of input did you have in the costumes and, and how, tell me about that. Oh, you've you've muted yourself. <laughs> you were. Am I back? Oh, now you're back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Trying to figure all this out. <laughs> That's okay. I know. I know. It's a lot to manage. Um. Yeah. The costumes. Uh, I have a fabulous costume designer. Her name is Sammy. Uh, Sammy Miller. And uh, <laughs> although I think she goes by Samantha Miller. And, in professional life, but we know her, Sammy. I love her so much. She is one of the biggest tutor nerds I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And so we had been talking about this show since I first brought it up to her that I was writing it, I think in 2015, um, we were working at the Bristol Valley Theater. I don't think we were working on the same show at the same time, but we were at staying at the same host family's house. Mm -hmm. And we just discovered our mutual love for the tutors and we nerded out so hardcore, it was wonderful. Awesome. And so when I was talking to her about the show, she was like, whenever you do this, it's me, I'm doing this show with you. Uh -huh. And so when luckily BBT was the one who decided to put on the pre premiere production, I was like, well, I know who my costume designer is. So we had talked about things a bit, but I kind of like let her just do her thing because I trust her. I mean, I know she knows the history. She knows she's a fantastic costume designer as it is. Mm -hmm. And so um, as part of doing this show for this summer, because there's only so much budget allotted for a summer stock uh, production. And we knew that this was going to be a big show. So I had done a little extra fundraising for uh, more of the budget so we could especially increase the costume budget. We knew mm -hmm. it was going to be tough. And um, you would be shocked to know how small that budget was that made those beautiful costumes. And a lot of it was from material that she just like, she found and she built these pieces. And so a lot of the pieces she wants to continue building as the show moves forward, which would be wonderful, but nothing on the horizon yet for a new production. So we'll see. Well, we will keep our fingers crossed. Yes. Um, I have to say though, specifically, I loved the doublet that I wore. It was so comfortable and I've, I've, never, I've never had such a nice torso shape in my life. Why did you not wear it to TudorCon? Oh, because it doesn't belong to me. Okay. If it did, trust me, I'd have worn it. That was right. great. <laughs> So I want you to play some more music for us, but also before you do that, I just have to interject that Kendra was on video for like half a minute right there and she had amazing hair. So it was really yes. gorgeous and blue. There it is. Thank yes, you. the blue hair. <laughs> My kids are going crazy and being like screaming loud outside because it's the first nice day we've had in two weeks. So yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of fun. I love your hair. Thank you. Inspired by, you know, stuck inside. Right? <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so, Blue hair, so play us some hair. more music and tell us about some more music that you're gonna play for us. Great. So um, I've got a song. So this was uh, one of the newest songs written for the show. So before the production this summer, I was doing a lot of talking with our director, Chris Hanley, and we were trying to get the show in shape for the summer production. And as part of that, there were a couple things that I knew were missing that I really wanted to write. So there were, I think, two brand new songs for the show. And this was the last song I had written right before the show uh, had to be frozen so we could get it all set for the production. Mm -hmm. And it is a musical sequence. I've, I've pulled up the script and I'll kind of like uh, scroll through if that's possible. I don't know if it'll show up on the screen share, because so you can understand what's happening. It's very complex. It's like a six minute musical scene with these mm -hmm. different sections where we see Anne Boleyn uh, kind of rising up in Henry's eyes and how she like works her way into his life and getting him interested in her. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, this also happened to be people's favorite song this summer. I pulled people throughout the summer, and this was the one that was always top of the list. Yeah. All right. So, um. Mary Upward. Right, Father? Have you been watching her? She's different, this one. Not that different. <laughs> this week's shiny object. Quick pause. Can you see the script when I pulled it up? I don't see the script. All right, I'll see if I can finagle that while it plays. All right, continuing. I like her lively fashion. It's quite small. It's yours. It's a game. But if she wants his notice, that's the key. Any man who lies with his brother's wife will remain childless. But you're not childless. Heirless then, without a son, and Leviticus is God's law. Yes, but the counter-argument is also God's law. And it is wrong. Henry, the Pope's dispensation was legal and just within the church. But only within the church. The Queen is in the gardens if you'd like to join us. And who is this? Mistress... Anne Boleyn. Go on, Henry. What do you mean? The dispensation is legal within the bounds of the church. But you, all of you, just said that the arguments being made are that of God's law, not church law. Even the Pope would recognize that he could not dispense with God's law. Now that is an argument worth pursuit. Do you not agree, Cardinal? It may be, Your Majesty. Hmm. Let us find out. Thank you, Mr. Sir. There's a little pause while they change the scene. But she's not funny, not a bitch. 
So that was the six minute musical beast that I wrote right before this show was gonna happen. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm interested in how you, and how you portray Anne um, in, in there and how other people were seeing Anne in that follow, mind, attend, refrain. Talk to me about how you decided on that. Um, well, one of the things that, uh, well, hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch off guard. No, 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 that's a good question. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do was portray the complexity of how she rose in court in, specifically in Henry's eyes, and how mm -hmm. it was not just about her looks by any way, shape, or form, which is where so many people put the emphasis. And I wanted to show that her wit, her intelligence, that she was someone that he enjoyed to be around, and mm -hmm. that uh, he was not the only one who was taking notice, and mm -hmm. was not the only one enamored with her. And when you're watching the video, you can see how, uh, her interactions with the, specifically the other men at court, like everyone's very interested in her. And then I was like, well, hmm, I have to utilize the guys throughout this whole process. I wonder if there's a way where I can utilize uh, the women and have just these court ladies kind of narrating their opinions on her as you're going through the musical scene. So we can see how some people like her, some people don't, there's this, uh, undeniable energy about her and she's definitely caused waves but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's enjoying her presence at court <laughs> mm -hmm. i see well i kind of picked up on like the juxtaposition between like what women were supposed to be doing following minding and attending and her saying she's not one to be led and you know but also that pull with the portrayal of how in the past people have shown like that maybe Thomas Boleyn was trying to pimp out his daughters and like all that kind of stuff and just this taking the agency away from her for herself and I feel like in your song you kind of gave her some of that back. Yeah well that's been my biggest goal and also struggle with this show has been making certain that Anne is the protagonist and that she has agency the entire time. Because I am a firm believer that sure, I, I mean, we cannot deny that her family had a lot to do with why she was there and what she ended up doing. However, I fully believe that she had the agency to be the person to hook Henry and then keep him for a decade. Mm -hmm. Like there's, that just seems undeniable to me. And mm -hmm. even just the way that people talk about her historically, whether it's positive or negative, they talk a lot about her. There is something mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to make sure that my Anne Boleyn had agency throughout the entire show. Mm -hmm. And that's been tricky to do because you know what? A lot of people do not find a woman with agency to be an appealing protagonist. And that's been hard to put together. Gosh, golly, it even is, seems like it, like 500 years later, it just seems like that should be a little bit different, but. I agree, <laughs> and hence my show. <laughs> but I will say, coming off of the summer's production, and it wasn't perfect, there were still things that I want to, that I have tweaked since, that I want to continue tweaking about her journey specifically and making sure that she is viewed as a, uh, an, an empathetic, sympathetic, likable human being who has goals and desires that connect to everybody. But I will say that coming off the summer production, um, no one told me that they disliked Anne. And that is the first time ever in this journey that no one told me that they disliked her. So that was a big step. <laughs> Yay. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I, I'm. it's always interesting to see how people portray her and how, and I, it, it's funny because I kind of want to ask you this question about what it's like for you writing the perspective of women being a man, but I kind of also think that's sort of sexist because you wouldn't ask, I mean, I don't know, maybe you would ask a woman what it's like writing men from that perspective 
And then you start getting into all kinds of depth of like way more philosophical than I want to get into right now. But um, what kind of research did you do around that? And like, what was it like for you, even just not women, men, regardless, just writing these personalities from 500 years ago and trying to understand their, what was pushing them and then turning that into music? Like, what was that mm -hmm. process like? Well, um, it was hard. It was long. <laughs> yeah. I've consumed so much information, um, articles, books. Also, the fiction, I feel like uh, it was really important for me to see how these characters, were, uh, these people <laughs> were being portrayed as characters in other forms of fiction and what that would mean for people, mm -hmm. how people reacted to those characters in those specific portrayals. Um, it's, it's so hard to write complex people to begin with, but when right. their story is also extraordinary, extraordinarily complex, that muddied the waters for me. So, and then uh, you add 500 years worth of other people telling it on top of right. That. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I was trying to not let stand in my way. So like some of the biggest research I tried to do up front was, okay, what has everyone said about these people, specifically Anne and Henry, over the past 500 years? Give me the dirtiest and give me the best. And just not just the contemporaries, but also like how have people since talked about them? Mm -hmm. And you know, the, there's this gigantic gap right after Anne's death of like mm -hmm. 200 years where nobody talks about her. Yeah. At all. Like yeah. her, what her contemporaries said, just the, that, yeah. that's it. That's what people thought, if they thought about her at all. And I found that fascinating too. Like, why did she re-enter the public consciousness? And why then there was like Agnes story? Strickland and the Victorians who had all the, their yes. ideas about her. And, and then like everybody latched on and then there's just so much that came from that. It's fascinating to me. So I did a lot of that kind of research. And um, yeah, I don't, as far as writing their music, I don't know. Each of them kind of came to me with a sound. Okay. And I, I wanted to work within those motifs, in those sounds. Um, I don't know. It's hard to describe the composition process in general. Right, no, I'm sure. Um, you said something there and it made me think of something, but I've forgotten what it was. And it was something I really, I wanted to ask. That is my life. I do that all the time. Do you really? Yes. I thought it was just after I turned 40, like losing my brain, but. Oh no, that's me all the time. All the time? Okay, great. Um, oh, sugar. I, I might think of it anyway. Um, you, oh, you did, speaking of music, you did try to incorporate some early music sounds into your musical kit. Maybe you can, maybe that can be a, maybe you can talk to me about that and maybe play some of that. Sure. Uh, yeah. So writing musical theater is, um, we, a lot of people talk about how musical theater has its own very specific sound. Like you can tell immediately if a song is from a musical. I think that's, less so these days like I mean honestly the first time I heard some of six I was like oh someone wrote a pop album about six mm -hmm. and then they told me it was a show I was like oh well yeah. cool but you know that sounds like a pop album but one of the things that I really wanted to make sure that we got was a sense from the musical atmosphere of where we are what mm -hmm. time period what country so even right away from the very, very first draft of this thing, I tried to incorporate music from the time period. Um, I wrote a madrigal, a three-voiced madrigal, that was uh, a part of the very, very first iteration of this show and is basically unchanged. Some of the lyrics have changed, but I just, I wanted to make sure that my style was being mixed with the style of the time period and then that was going to kind of roll out and create the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So there's that. The ending of the show is written uh, like an English anthem essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? I, I have little snippets of, of music from the time period throughout. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else specific off the top of my head though. <laughs> Well, can you play, can you play your magical? Is that handy? Can you find it? Sure. Or, I don't want to 
if you can't find it, don't worry about it. No, I've got it here. I've got all the demos around. Let's see. Uh, by the way, did you see the script after I changed it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll see if I can do that again. Where is the sounds of spring? Here we are. So this, again, this is a musical montage here where you get the first verse and you get the verse and then you get the verse with the crossing voices and then there's a scene and then you get the second verse and very much in the style of Magicals of the Time Period, it is secular. It is written about imagery of nature and so often is uh, our seasons a part of that. And so this is in act two, it's mid act two. We are seeing the cracks forming, <clears throat> pardon me, seeing the cracks forming in the relationship between Anne and Henry based off of specifically uh, the births and the way that Anne is pushing for Elizabeth to be put in the line of succession. Mm. So let's see, doing the screen share. Sounds of spring spring forth from you with boundless joy they dance. The sounds of spring bring warmth from you, they light and spark romance. The summer winds rush in, the sun upon our skin. Our love to fill, our hearts to brim, our lovers rolling in. The sounds of spring spring forth from you with boundless joy they dance. The sounds of spring bring I know, my love. I am heartbroken. Are you? You don't mean that. I don't. I'm sorry. You're certain it was a boy. I know that you are disappointed, but I still have time. It's all right. We will try again and we will have a son, a little brother for our little princess. Like the first boy you promised. What? Yes, my love, we will. Did Parliament pass the new act of succession today or have they stalled again? Henry. Why are you pushing so hard to make Elizabeth next in line over Mary? If you're so certain about having a son, all of this could wait. But what if something were to happen to the child? Or to me during childbirth? Wouldn't you want your line secure? Elizabeth is not a son and she never will but be she one. she is an excellent heir. She's already capable well beyond her age. She's kind and intelligent and a mischievous little spitfire. No one can ever doubt that she was your daughter. And a far better legitimate choice over Catherine's ragged offspring. Yes, love. Worry not. Your act of succession has passed. Elizabeth is next in line. Good. For now. Then it will be my son. I feel a frigid autumn chill within my bones it lies. I feel a chill from all the hills, the sunlight flees and dies. The winter came upon a steely frozen dawn. We thought for Charles we'd keep our cheer, but no, perhaps next year. I feel a frigid autumn We just think. You've made it all too clear what you think. Henry! Your Majesty. Your Majesty, we simply believe this focus on a son is potentially doing more harm than good. But to think of taking a new wife now with Anne still so young. And a Catholic one after breaking from the church. And to imprison the Queen would be insane. On exorbitant charges nonetheless. Anne is still Queen with a legitimate daughter. And Elizabeth is a well-loved child. An excellent Anne. Enough! I've had it with your nagging. You two have run out your use. Leave my court and stay out. Henry. Get out. The winter came upon a steely frozen dawn. We thought her 
chums, we keep our cheer much no perhaps next year. We thought perchance we'd keep our cheer but no perhaps next year. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, Yay. that one. Uh, that that was kind of like Thomas Morley, huh? With um, I heard uh, each with his bonnie lass upon the greeny grass in there. You got me pegged. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to a lot of Morley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no one better there. That was awesome. I that was really cool. I really like that. Well, thank you. That's uh, one of those songs that is it's really helpful to show kind of. Uh, how far I would take it in in the musical as to portraying the atmosphere, but it's also really hard to do out of context, just like four people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that was cool. That was cool. Um, yeah, and I, I'm just trying to think that I was I was just kind of you kind of just like I'm spaced out now because I was just in this magical world, and so um, I'm not really <laughs> sure what to ask you right now. So maybe you can just like... great. Well, we can. Uh we can move forward to we have a little bit and also um you know people if anybody if kendra or anybody has questions um they want to ask or type i think kendra is still muted and i can't unmute her because you're the host now but you don't have to. i think she might want to be muted anyway because she's with her kids so if she mm -hmm. wants to type a question or if um right. tina wants to jump in or anything that is there any chance it'll be played again oh okay. yes it's most certainly going to happen again I just don't know yet where and when, but we're working on it. So you'll let us know. Oh, absolutely. I will certainly keep everyone uh, informed. You have a group of hardcore fans here. They yeah, think we're going to have to organize a road trip to wherever you are, yeah. you know? We'll go wherever. We'll, go wherever. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will say, though, uh, I'm trying to work out for during this, you know, lovely quarantine, I'm trying to work out something with the theater that um, we can hopefully do a live stream of the film from the summer later this month. <gasps> yes, so here's the hoping that we can actually figure that out because right now there's a lot of logistics that go into it, but it'd be really fun to revisit that. I had a hired a videographer who did like a full stage shot and also all these close-ups and I edited the whole thing together. And so I've got this great video, as you can see from the teaser trailer, like the footage is good. And I'd really love to share that, even though the show's changed already since the summer, it'd be really fun to, to share yeah. what we actually did with people who, you know, would like to see it and who couldn't this summer. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. I will definitely update you if it's gonna happen. Yes, please. That's very exciting. Very exciting. Oh, Kendra, you guys still talk about it in your group chat? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We get together. Um, we chat like every couple of days and it's always tutor related and we always talk about the performance at the church. So. <laughs> well, which was so much fun for me. It's like just to watch everybody and see everyone's reactions and hear what you all had to say afterwards. That was a lot of fun that night. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, yeah, so what, yeah, what, yeah, we have a couple, I don't know, we have a couple more minutes here. What, what else would you like to play for us? What else? And I just realized, because you're playing music, like, can I, I know you, we talked about recording this. Is this okay mm -hmm. to post afterwards? Because, like, you have the rights because you're the composer, right? So can I go ahead and post this places? Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yep. <laughs> the music is mine. Um, uh, I think what we'll, we'll, we'll have to chat about, uh, giving credit to the people on the recordings, but I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, I could play, let's see. I know Heather that you really like a Tudor Rose, uh, that the, mm -hmm. the women's ballad, yeah. uh, a queen of England is a lot of people's favorites. Cause that's the, the big one she's about to be beheaded and Let's see. Oh, and then everyone really loves um, one of Catherine's songs. It's very short. It's called I See. Um, I, think I, I think we did that one at the concert at TourCon. 
But that one's super short. Let me play that one. Everyone okay. loves this song. This is uh, right after, this is mid act one. And they just did the pageant and the mask. And Henry and Anne clearly shared a moment during <laughs> this. And as in the production, it, as uh, the dance was slowly fizzling out and people were being kind of dismissed from court, Catherine in this like dreamlike state sang the song as she came and ultimately after this confronts Anne for the first time. So mm. let's do a screen share. All right. <laughs> Daily I sit and observe Watch as they all find the nerve To chase what they think they deserve Yes, I see Ladies who want something Has always been the queen I admire most, Kendra says. Yeah. I love Catherine Farragon so much. She <laughs> is absolutely singular in history. There's just so much to be said. <laughs> yeah. I love her too, but you know, sometimes I get a little frustrated with just how stubborn she was. Yeah. Ah, because, you know. I mean, you're not going to win that one. Surely after having been married to him for 20 years and the King of France had just done it to Claude mm -hmm. and sent her away to a nunnery. She saw that yeah. happen. Her own sister had been locked away. She saw that happen. I mean, like he offers you this nice life in a convent. And I mean, like, I don't know. To me, it's just kind of like- And she could have seen really, her- You really that. think you're going to win this one? Yeah. Yeah. Made it harder for Mary. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it for Mary. I understand. I just, I find it a little frustrating. There are times when I really, because I, I, you know, Mary came out so much worse anyway and yeah. never got married because like sh her whole, her legitimacy and what, and where, where did she stand and all of that. I think Henry would have been willing to recognize her the way he recognized Henry Fitzroy and set, you know, married her and set her up with a, marriage and now here she wound up living a pretty miserable life anyway and so there are times when I get very frustrated with Catherine I agree and I, I agree <laughs> but yeah but, but, Mary and Catherine could have visited each other if she would have given in it would have been a whole yeah. different life yeah though so I would like to counter all of this with Please. ultimately Henry didn't have to be such a jerk well there is that too like it's so easy to to blame Catherine for her actions, but you know, uh, he didn't have to do what he did to her. And so really it's my frustration really comes at Henry because why, why did he have to be so awful about it? He was going to do whatever he wanted, no matter what. Yeah. 
or to blame Anne for what happened to Catherine. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, and it's also so hard for us. We can sit around here and say, oh, I'm frustrated by this or, oh, that I agree with that or whatever. Like, it's so hard to judge what we would have done 500 years ago with the, right. you know, and also with Catherine, if she really truly believed that she was putting her soul in peril by agreeing to something that she didn't actually agree to, then, mm -hmm. you know, what's this life compared to eternity? So you got to go with that. Yeah. And, and for Henry, for, even you know, for Henry though, he had precedent. King, Kings did yeah. this. So he yeah. was expected to get permission from Rome, just like other kings had. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, of course, we have to also talk about those circumstances, because at the end of the day, if things politically weren't where they were, he would have gotten that divorce. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, who, who ultimately can you put blame on? It was like the perfect storm of yeah. things going wrong. <laughs> Which is why it's so fascinating, why we love the story so much. Yeah, true. It's true, because there's stuff we can talk about and think about and write music about, even all this time later. Yeah. Um, do we want to play uh, one more? Do we wanna yeah, do... let's, play, let's play one more if you have the time. Yeah, let's do, do the queen. Do the, do the, the queen of England? Yeah, Queen of England. All right, that I can do. That <laughs> and Kendra right. seconds that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Okay, great. Screen share. And this technology is so cool. I'm so pleased with this. How fun. I did it, Father. Haven't you seen? You didn't bother to congratulate your queen. Watch as your daughter is sent now to slaughter. I worked my magic. I cast out my spell. It seems so tragic how quickly I fell. No surprise, is it? Will anyone visit my cell? Every little thing you do will have an effect. I was queen, and now I'm through. It's time to collect. Do what you do. Go on, be bold. But always remember, it comes back threefold. The prince's mother, through duty and pain. A little brother, my loss, Henry's gain. But now that I'm buried, I fear that I carried in vain. Every little thing you do will have an effect. I was queen and now I'm through. It's time to collect. Do what you do. Go on, be bold. But always remember it comes back threefold. What you give is what you get. And we get what we deserve. You labor and you sweat to stay ahead of the curve. But if your work is tainted and you find that you're acquainted with a family who is painted, you are fate without choice. And you struggle and you glower and escape from Howard Tower until you have all the power to destroy with your voice. I was a queen of
pushed it out of control. I pushed it out. I pushed it out of control. I did. 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 I did.
And I have a Patreon now. Thank you to the suggestions of everyone at TutorCon who was like, get a Patreon. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's <laughs> patreon.com slash Michael Ratty. And I post everything I do now. I recently changed it up. So no, it's not just about King's Legacy. It's not just about the musicals I write. It's everything I do because I have a weekly blog that's about theater. I all like these behind the scenes things of how I do things in my life and what I'm up to, as well as everything related to the King's mm -hmm. Legacy. There are demos on there that no one's heard before. So if you sign up to be a patron, you can hear some of these demos of music that I wrote after the summer's production. I'm doing so. that right now. I didn't <laughs> even know about that. And currently I don't have things tiered out. Um, I may in the future, but as of now, you can pretty much sign up at any level, even just $1 a month to uh, get some of these perks. So. Fun. All right, yep, there it is. Look at that. All right. Um, awesome, well, thank you so much for, um, for sharing. Okay, I'm going to stop that right now because I'm going to talk to you. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to do it when I'm done here. Um, so, I, okay, that song's so powerful. Yeah, Kendra said that song's so powerful. I get goosebumps and all the feels. I need feels. I need to spend some time catching up. Life is crazy busy. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and home, we're like all homeschooling now, right? <laughs> it's amazing. Imagine. So You've all become teachers now, and it's just on top of parenting, on top of everything you're doing yeah. for your own work. Ah, you guys are heroes. It's you're crazy. all heroes. It's crazy. Um, anyway, homeschooling, working. Yeah, I know, right? I'm in school too. Good grief. It's just nuts. It's just nuts. But, you know, honestly, I complain about it, but I'm glad that we, I was reading about, you know, the Spanish flu and how they didn't even recognized viruses until 1933 so they didn't even know that it was a virus and you know how it just ripped through and I'm just so grateful that we have modern medicine you know there are times when I would like to go back to the 16th century and when it comes to medicine I'm like not really a fan of that yeah precisely that <laughs> and if we have to be quarantined did... and homeschooling and stuff we have all these resources and technology so it's yeah. you know I can complain thank god, for, thank god for modern technology that we could do these kinds of things and right, right. Mm -hmm. um that episode you did heather on tutor medicine uh, what a year and a half two years oh, ago with Seamus or something yeah oh my gosh that blew my mind I was like oh no these poor yeah. people <laughs> hi hello hello say hi <laughs> no, you. Oh, and there's another one. Yeah. There's another my one. Logan and Henry. <laughs> Logan and Henry. Hello, Logan and Henry. Hello. This is me. <laughs> okay. He's just going to say, This is me for the next 10 minutes. That's you. That's, yeah. Hi. Bye. Hi. <laughs> hey, Thanks for saying hi. Hi. Hey, Dad, come okay. home. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um, um heather also because yes. i'm gonna post this places too can you plug all of your things and all of what you do and why i'm even here please <laughs> oh sure yeah no i i do the renaissance english history podcast which i've done been doing since 2009 and it's the longest running longest continuously running indie history podcast that's out there so that's kind of fun um i love it <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, that's the main thing of what I do, which you can look it up on any podcatcher or englandcast.com. And that is how we met because you wrote to me because you were doing research and you found my podcast. And I wrote back because I love musicals. And a friendship was born. It was. It's so nice to see your faces. <laughs> and I should get to chat with you. Yeah, you too. Oh, the train's coming by. No, it was lovely to chat with you too. Thank you so much for taking the time. And then if you can send me over all of the credits that I should put when I send, when I do put this out there, and then I'll also yes. send you the link and we can share all around. Great. Wonderful. Do I have to transfer host trip? back to you oh yeah why don't you just transfer it back thank just you michael thank you heather thank, thank you tina. tina so good to see okay, you bye. 
And on Wednesday, Brigitte is going to be here at six o'clock, my time, noon, your time. Um, Brigitte Webster from the Tudor and okay. 17th century experience. So let me, so you Bye. guys can, um, yeah, she's going to be talking about Tudor food. Okay. And am I the host now? I can't tell what I am. Uh, no, how do I host you back? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I don't think. I think, so. I think it does though for recording for the recording. Well, no, because I'm recording it in the cloud. Oh. On my you Zoom so account, fancy. so it shouldn't matter. <laughs> we can edit this part out. <laughs> or does it add more charm? <laughs> meeting. No, 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 no. It's perfect. This is this is perfect. This is um cl close chat, edit. I could just Google it really quick. Let me just Google it. Take back um, hosting. Oh, I bet it's in these preferences here. <laughs> I love how we're all learning this stuff. Like I've used Zoom for ages, but some of these, like, I don't know, I've never made other people hosts and then taken back. Take yeah, back hosting Zoom. Oh, in the host controls, click manage. Well, where the hell are the host controls? Host controls. Oh, participants. Oh, oh, maybe. Well, no, I don't mean to do that. Um, oh, is it room management? Account management, user management, where are we? Oh, I think if you go over my name, if you just hover over my name on the side, mm -hmm. are you in full screen? Can you exit full screen mode? mode? I'm not. Oh, there we go. You are right. And then make me the host. Now I'm the host. Hooray. We did it. We did it. Woohoo. <laughs> it's, it's really hard for me with this because the light comes in I'm always like having weird so I apologize for that but um thank you for chatting and for being here and for everything and uh thank just you. so Thanks lovely to see me. you you too and uh I look forward to more tutorifying tutorifying all the way all right stay safe elbow bumps you too. and all of that okay <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. <Helen. laughs>